Pilot, go ahead and ease up and uh, let, let the strain come out there, please. Copy that. Pilot easing out. Let the strain come out. And pilot, yeah, pilot, come back at least 60 percent, please. Pilot backing 60 percent. Clear or serious? Say it again, Kappa. Just so you know, when the dive super asks your turns, you're saying. Pilot, you can ease off a little bit. You're a little close. Copy that. Pilot easing off. Down to 50%. Pilot, go ahead and ease up and uh, let, let the strain come out of the tether, please. Copy that. Pilot easing out, letting the strain come out. And pilot, are you ready to dive? Pilot is ready to dive. Co pilot, you see that on the. Hey, you're way out. Gotcha. I am. Cool. I'm just going to peek down here. By the way, I'll pass on that uh, suddenly the uh, Tacon uh, is much clearer. That's nice. Oh, oh, great. That's good. Yeah. so funny, I was just thinking the same thing. In fact, I think Take I just said the same thing you did. I'm going to translate to the right. Patty, as great minds think alike. So this is an Ophidiot, um, which is a, a Cuskiel. Um, the very round head makes me think it's a Basilzetus. And yes, uh, Bruce Mundy has just said the same thing. And if we were to get a shot of its eye, it'd probably be quite small and beady. It's a pretty hard sonar return to me. Yep. Keep coming in. Small and beady. Keep coming in. All day, all day. Oh my gosh, stop turning. You're talking about right in front of you? <laughs> He's not interested. He's like, don't look at me. Bash. Don't look at my beady eyes. Okay, yeah, that's great, pilots. Thank you. Forward. Stop antagonizing okay. the fish. Full wide. Copy. Nice flying. Some small yeah. sort of extensions coming off of it, and those get bigger as you move up the sponge. Video. Oh, okay. Or, um, or this. How's that? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Or uridite? Yeah. How does the next word get? Conalasmatine. Look at you. Did you take Latin as a trial, Diva? No. Wow. I took English and bad English. <laughs> okay, zooming out. Get a full shot. Thank you, pilot. You can tilt down a bit. Are we ready yeah. to move on? Yes, we are. Thank you. All right, we, we are ready. One eight zero moves down if it isn't already. It should be moving up. Hold there. Two two zero. That's great. Two two zero. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Twenty five again. Excellent. See, there are tons of loose rocks. Pilot, if you mind giving it a spin. Sure. So it's great for you loosened up a few others for the next ROV. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, good. Very true, Chris. Want to get it back in the light? We should remember this as a dredging spot, Deb. Good. <laughs> Just missed the coral cutters there. I'm glad we're making you guys so happy today. <laughs> I was nervous about that. It was cemented. It was just in a shallow bath of sediment. We're trying to figure that out ourselves. Figure what out? I think it's because um, I think it's because even with the you know the a little bit of a problem getting in the water, the ROV is down and diving, and that's making us quite happy. Good, okay, good. good. Yep. Good. Yep. Okay. Port. Are you going? Port. Yep. yep. Thank you. Sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sure. I'm going to come outboard with us if you just close. One of the reasons why they're so important in that we do, video. we only collect yeah, two samples, two biology samples or so per dive, but they can be extremely valuable in helping to determine, um, helping to define these species groups, basically. Um, so this is another camatulid crinoid from the genus Sarametra. And you can see here it's using it's many, many Siri to hold on to that uh, coral branch. Perfect. And where it's holding on, it's actually missing polyps. So perhaps this crinoid's actually sort of damaged this coral in that area. And you can just see the tissue's been worn away, and um, now it's just a skeleton oh, left. Okay. Ten minutes. And there was also a little anemone on the uh, on the coral there. Is that a group of anemones down that direction? Pan to the right a little bit. And look, pick a feather. Looking at the screen. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, as I'm looking at the screen, at this this beautiful image, and I'm studying the coral. I also have my computer open here to a database that has the uh, bamboo corals that we collected last year, and it also has some of the microscope imagery of the collections that we made. Clay, that we collected at 2,265 meters depth pilot? on the mid parent uh, ridge, make sure. and we are at bang right about that same depth level. So uh, it's fascinating. A lot of these species only live within certain depth. The of starboard the lower it goes all the way right on first time uh, temperature and. Something about the uh, water map itself. Spread out all the way is their home position. So starboard goes So in our last right. few minutes here on the seafloor, I'll yeah. note that like Pigafetta uh, Gio, Enrique yeah. Gio is also named oh, after Magellan's, Magellan's voyage. Uh, Enrique of Malacca was Magellan's servant and interpreter who was able to up communicate to with the, the different way. tribes that they up. encountered. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. operator. Okay. Yeah, we saw you in the hey, um, So, what is this? Beautiful anemone. So, we're, we're currently at. looking at a beautiful anemone that's definitely an exocoalactus. So, it's got the very characteristic short, stumpy column, as well as the tiny sort of um, we'll go full zoom. ball extensions on the end of each tentacle. What's the code for an anemone? ACM. Thank you. As well as just in the right of the screen, you can see another one of those um, clad rising sponges. A bit. Great imagery, guys. Oh, so not only do they see the feeds, but the feeds actually look better yeah, than nice. they did before. Great. So that's great Good news. news, yeah. And for those of you that are now, you're, you're able to type into the event log, I believe. Um, and if you can now see the feeds. Please take over the biology typing because I'm doing a terrible job. <laughs> no, you're not. Please. You're doing a great job. Please fix it. <laughs> right. You're happy. Yeah, just a few seconds.
Ooh, crap. Big guy. Wow. Ooh, yeah. And holding here. Okay, so we are currently looking at a Paralomus. Right. Yes, so a uh, type of lithoded crab. Um, how big do we think he is? And yeah, definitely a Paralomus. Higher body. Legs oh. are longer. We'll get lasers when we zoom out. Just hold here for a second, Josh. Co pilot deck. Deck's gone, you co pilot. That's really interesting. Okay, that'll do. Deck, were you calling co pilot? We'll zoom out. Get lasers. Uh, what I was calling. Holding part. We would like to install the uh, cable rinser, so we'll have to have you go off. Thanks. Thanks for the update. So this is in the family Ferritimatidae, and we think it's like? in the genus yes, Polyopagon. A couple yes, features yes. about these sponges, they're massive. They're some of the biggest sponges uh, that exist on the planet there, and that's referred to as a lophophytus attachment, where their spicules are all sort of loose and thread-like, and they're not all glued together like other sponges that form a more solid base. So uh, attachments in the sponge, and perhaps that's a protective function, uh, it's not really clear, but uh, this particular group has uh, fairly extensive sid plates over the front end of it, and that's My another man. clue. That's 170. Great. Is this a right. demo sponge or a glass sponge? Push starboard. Yeah, this is a glass Stop. sponge, so all of the spicules are going to be silicious. Put your mini zoos back down. Um, I actually didn't touch it. Okay. See you down there. Do you want to do bank one? And I'll do matters or? Yep. All right. 